This is the Out of Time Film Podcast, where your hosts, Tom and John, discuss everything from blockbuster films to TV and games like there's no tomorrow. Hello and welcome to the Out of Time Film Podcast. I'm Tom. I am John. And this week we are talking about Lego Star Wars Rebuild the Galaxy. Tom, when do you remember the last time you played a Lego game that was Star Wars? See now, I know that your answer is going to be a long a long time ago, yes. but I think the last time I played a Lego Star Wars game was last October. I think I played it on Halloween because all my friends were going out clubbing and I wasn't allowed to go It was <laughs> because it was a women-only bar. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to stay home and yeah. play it's Lego Star Wars. That is such a vibe, honestly. Um, I love I Lego so. Star Wars. Lego Star Wars has many, many memories for me growing up. I loved the sets, you know, building the sets. I loved the games. And then over the years, we got Lego content, like the Lego movie. That film was so good. We had so many Lego specials and stuff. And now we've got something that is very reminiscent to the Lego animation that we had. And Lego has so much creativity and so much freedom with its comedy as well. You can see that in this show as well which i absolutely love and i had fun with this show it just really reminded me of those good old days good old days <laughs> i should put some rousing inspirational music behind that that speech <laughs> of just the meaning of lego i mean yeah. yeah any long-term listeners of the podcast will know i'm a i'm a fiend i literally i had to delay this podcast recording by an hour because i was applying for a job at lego genuinely and I really hope I get it because anyone who knows me knows that is literally the perfect job for me. It is um, the perfect job, yes. It's funny because you've been building Lego for such a long time and I mm. recently got back into it because I still have two massive, massive boxes filled with Lego that I haven't built, but then I got new sets and I was like, okay, I want to get into the habit of building stuff again. And I love it. It's great. It's so much fun just to build things. You need to get that Lego out of the box and build. He's got some vintage sets in there. Well, I, I mean, I guess, I guess Chima, vintage from now. If anyone Chima? knows Chima, dude. But we're not dude. we're not here to talk about Chima. We're here to talk about so no, way, Chima. way way back when we actually did the Lego Star Wars holiday special on the pod. And I just think that these Lego shorts, these Lego shows, they're so much fun. They are just a delight. And I gotta say, it's been quite the month for Star Wars. I mean, it's a time oh, I can't. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we knew I was going to get into it. It's time I can't put into words. Uh, you know, if you follow the pod, you'll know that we love the Acolyte and the cancellation. It sucks. And the fallout of that, what we've seen actors and creators face, it's it's frankly disgusting. And it comes from people who I don't believe even deserve to be called Star Wars fans. And I can't wait to have them in the comments of this very video. Somehow the franchise's direction seems to kind of be catering towards them to this hegemonic elite who seem to be on some sort of crusade to make the saga boring until the end of time. I don't want to get bogged down into that though. So what I've done is I've included some links in the description, things that we as fans can do to let Lucasfilm and Disney know that we want more for the Acolyte and that these voices don't speak for us. And also some really important information about about these voices, these YouTube channels, and their negative impact upon numerous fandoms and real people. Information that I think YouTube in particular should be listening to and acting on because to be paid for this kind of hateful rhetoric is, it's appalling. And some of the attacks in this last week, I mean, Star Wars explained one of the greatest Star Wars channels ever. I, I, I've had the pleasure of meeting Alex and Molly at Celebration last year and just delightful, delightful people. And for them to be attacked, it, it, it's ridiculous. It's been a tough time to be a Star Wars fan. And I feel like that's something that's been happening again and again. You know, numerous groups are attacked for their enjoyment and involvement in the franchise. And so I felt that what I needed as a fan was some fun. And I boot up this special four episodes long. And you know what? It was exactly the fun that I needed. It was enjoyable. It was light. It had that Lego kick to it, which made the whole thing even more special. It had so many little nods to fans. And I just had a great time. It was so fun, especially, you know, the negativity that's been happening in the Star Wars fandom. This show was such a vibe. It just really reminded me, you know, watching the Lego movie, or the Lego Batman movie as well. And the comedy was just so on point every time. It just kept moving and moving and moving. And yeah, like the Lego kick as 
well. You know, he's got that the energy, that vibe all the way through. There's one thing I absolutely love about this show is that it doesn't forget about the characters in Star Wars at all. Like Rose, we haven't completely forgot about Rose as a character. Yeah, which is great to see because Kelly Marie Tran she went to a lot of hate for the character as Rose in The Last Jedi, and it was really sad to see her character just turn into nothing in The Rise of Skywalker. But here, it was just great to see her as like a Sith Lord. I'm really glad that they gave these characters a bit of closure in that like they're not integral but they are actually part of the story they actually do something for that whole world to see and here we have this one with we build the galaxy it feels like an elseworld story which i'm really happy yeah. to see because we have elseworld stories as well like marvel what they're doing but that is way too messy trying to reinforce the multiversal thing but here they've done it lightly with the multiversal thing it, it's not forced it's not trying to rub it in into this world it's a completely different world new rules new characters that old characters get to be replaced as some of the characters as well and it was really funny to see that in the story where wookies are the no ewoks i, uh, I, I knew uh, i was gonna mess that up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mess that up. it's yeah, fine he was ewoks. he was doing a bit it's from the show it's <laughs> fine doing a bit from this show guys don't worry yeah with the ewoks the villains we saw darth ray as well yeah. which is so cool yeah, yeah there was and loads darth of jar jar darth what? jar jar man no no the prophecy i mean i loved just seeing so many corners of the galaxy get represented sequels originals prequels it's all there you've got stuff from andor you've got stuff from young jedi adventures you name it it's probably in there there's mentions of so many different corners of the galaxy and it's like we're celebrating all of it we're poking fun at the stupid stuff we're poking fun at the great stuff none of it feels too sacred and like you, you can't really complain about this show no one's complaining about canon breaks canon is what you make of it as a fan this very much reminded me of something like visions where you can just kind of say yeah if you want it to be canon it can be canon i guess but but it really exists on its own plane of existence. And there's been a lot of people who have been calling for Star Wars What If, you know, a multiversal Star Wars story. I personally think that's a little bit boring. We as fans have always entertained those ideas, but do we really need to see a whole show about what if Anakin never turned to the dark side? Because if Anakin never turned to the dark side, then the saga will be over pretty quickly, you know? <laughs> and so... You will see love... the closing credits. It's just like, yeah. oh, that's it, guys. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I really like the idea that we can just kind of explore that in some fun ways. As you said, we get to see Rose back and Kelly Marie Tran comes back to play her, which is amazing. And also Jana, so Naomi Aki coming back as well. She barely gets any play in Rise of Skywalker. There's a bunch of actors who are back, which is always great to see. And it's so fun to kind of follow all of them. But the GOATs, this is one for the Lego fans because Jedi Bob is Jedi here. Bob, and yeah. I am so thrilled that he was in this show because my god anyone who knows about Jedi Bob knows that he's a mythic in the Lego community so to have this show give him a Star Wars style name I can't even remember it but it's like Boberanium something ridiculous but like <laughs> Jedi Bob is his nickname that he hates we're giving him a character he's played by Bobby Moynihan who does him really well I love this idea that we're taking such a small cat he is a glup shitter and we're taking that glup shitter and we're just kind of like moving along with him yeah. it's so fantastic yeah and one of the things that reminded me of you tom was mm. um it, at the beginning of the story say he was telling about the star wars like lore and stuff and then he was about to say like oh and then we're going to talk about grand animal to that reminded me of you you were <laughs> talking about Thrawn all the time and it's like oh my <laughs> god is Thrawn abandoning this planet with, with ezra and, and oh my oh my god and it's reminded me of you you told me so many different stories across the galaxy and it's just like star wars is massive but also there's so many things it, it's always like that malcolm in the middle whenever you ask me a star wars question i'm like john there's no turning back if you ask me this <laughs> it's yeah, like that. there's only it's one like... thing it's like we're gonna talk about i'm a gun die the greatest guy oh yeah i thought, I thought i'm a gun die was gonna appear out of the story i was like you know what let's have yeah. a gun die in this hey, story if there's any place for i'm a gun die to appear please it has to be because i think that this show kind of sets it up for a season two i'd absolutely love to see more <laughs> of this because there's so many infinite possibilities and come on bring him back maybe he didn't die in this universe maybe he's ima didn't die maybe that's the twist 
and actually he's god in this universe right like i didn't die <laughs> i'm a gundai didn't die it's it's poetic i'm a gundai didn't <laughs> die that's that's a pretty hard name yeah to be fair oh, the gong droid i want the yeah, gong droid well i was gonna say i thought that like you know at the beginning when you get the whole like disney plus star wars bit where it's like look at all the helmets and all the faces and then the gong droid is like gonk i i just i i couldn't help but think of you and just be like i bet john's so happy right now because his glup shitto the gonk droid got the representation that it deserved and if that wasn't enough the gonk droid gets a voice and it's none other than michael kusak the creator of smiling friends and bushworld adventures what? What a great day to be a Gong Droid fan. What oh a wonderful God. day. What a wonderful day. <laughs> yeah, that was oh so awesome. That was so awesome to hear that because I was like, wait a minute, that's the guy who went crazy in Bushfield Adventure <laughs> and then Smiling of Friends as well. And I was like, yeah, that's definitely Michael Cusack. That was awesome. That was so cool to hear him as a droid in, in this one. And it was just like, yes. <laughs> this is a great day. This is a great day. Oh my god. But yeah, I loved this character. He wasn't too annoying like Claptrap. Yes. Lord Lance, I'm looking at you. It's a good point. It's easy to get those characters wrong. And also in Star Wars, every time they introduce a new droid, I'm always like, okay, are we gonna just do what we did before? But like you have your B2 emos, you have your L337s, you have your K2SOs. They're all different. They're all different flavors of that kind of droid archetype. And it can be difficult to get that right. But ah, oh, the gonk was so cute and adorable, and just his little one-liners. And I gotta say, if if it wasn't Michael Cusack, like another actor could have got that wrong. But I think the, the voice cast just throughout were just did fantastic. I think particularly Gaten Matarazzo and Tony Revolori, who are at the center of this, these two brothers who really, you got to sell that dynamic. And for a saga that is kind of central around Luke and Leia, these two siblings, we don't get a lot of play with them as siblings in the movies. Mm -hmm. They really get in my opinion, two scenes in the entire saga to really explore that dynamic. And that's not a criticism. I love that. But I really like the idea that we actually have these two brothers here and we can explore the idea of like what happens when they're separated. What does that feel like? And I think it's really wonderful to kind of dig into that a little bit and hopefully, yeah, like if we do a season two, go into that a little bit more. Yeah, I think they look into the character dynamics of the siblings. And the one thing I love about this show as well is that they don't go to the, oh, you need to rebuild the universe the way it was. Um, yeah. And I love the ending to that. It's about Sig who wants to tell his story from his galaxy. And I think that was a great arc for him to understand. You might not go back to his old galaxy, but he can tell his story. I think that was pretty profound in terms of like with Star Wars is like Star Wars it keeps growing you know there's so many stories to tell or many more characters to see in this world oh at the ending as well we had the Landalorian yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Because I could recognize the voice. I was like, that's Lando for sure. And yeah. then the land, brilliant. Just br brilliant. Come on. Like, this is, I I'm so glad that we covered this because <laughs> it's peak content. I love it. But I want to say genuinely, that is a really fantastic point about the ending because, dude, it's, it's meta. But genuinely, as a Star Wars story, it's kind of about Star Wars fans, right? Like, Sig mm -hmm. is this character who really is obsessed with all the stories and he loves telling and, you know, experience them again and again. But what he learns is you can't rewrite the story that we're telling. A lot of Star Wars fans, what do they do? They beg to wipe something from canon. They beg to redo the sequels. They beg to bring back legends. These stories are how they are, and we aren't the ones who shape them. The ones who shape them are a lucky few and a talented few. And I think it's brilliant that this show actually comments on the insistent need of a lot of fans to tell it exactly the way that they want it, but that's never going to happen. It's never going to be exactly the way if it happens exactly as you want it then you are very very lucky but mm. that's not how these stories go and for sig to learn that lesson i thought was really beautiful and it was a level of profundity that i didn't expect from this but yeah, i was really profound, really yeah. happy that it was there yeah that social commentary on that with fans and stuff because it's like there's a lot of things that are happening around writers as well they're trying to shape their own stories or trying to do their own things and maybe it's the author at play or is that the fans and i think star wars again is a massive universe and people are just complaining about trying to get things wiped away from canon or trying to stop shows and stuff like especially the 
backlight and they're thinking, oh no, there's a woman that directed this this show and she tried to shape Star Wars. <laughs> ah! And it's just so sad to see when fans are just trying to call themselves Star Wars fans and try to use that just to shut down a show. And it's like, you need to take a step back and think about there's so many things that are happening in Star Wars and you're complaining about that. We're here with Siggy, he's telling the story about Star Wars. He's not changing it. He, he told exactly what it was in the story. I mean, there's some stupid things, but again, Star Wars is, you know, it has mistakes. But who cares? At the end of the day, <laughs> it's about enjoying and watching something together that has some social political aspects in, in the show. And that's mm. what it was. That's what the, the show is trying to express. Yeah, yeah, I was really surprised and pleased about that whole aspect. And even at the end, Sig writes down the timeline of his universe so he can remember it and it really is just like the wiping of Star Wars Legends it might not be the universe that we are following we are in now but it doesn't mean it never happened doesn't mean it's not important and I really enjoyed that idea I really kind of would have loved this show to be 22 episodes it yes, feels like give me 22 episodes <laughs> yeah, give me everything right? that you got please it, yeah, feel, it feels like so many TV shows now where I, I watch the four episodes and I was like this is great why don't we have more of this and my biggest criticism of this show would be it feels like every episode runs at breakneck speed and it's yes. like if we slow down we could tell this story so much more richer and so much more slowly and mm -hmm. yeah sure i get it you know it's a lego show it's not taking everything to but no the lego movie is one of the most profound and heartfelt animated films very true and yes. it knocks you off guard with just how beautiful and poignant it is the ending, and man. so the ending, the ending exactly it, it, it's so brilliant i haven't seen that film in so many years but like even thinking <laughs> about it it's a beautiful film and yes. so i don't think that this series is above that i do absolutely think that it deserves to be given that extra time if we get a season two make it more than four episodes yeah maybe 22 might be a stretch maybe it'd be like maybe double it see what eight episodes what we can explore but it feels like there's so much that we're doing here there's so many stories going on you can dig so much deeper into everything into the creativity into the worlds that we've made into the what's it even called the moss Eisley um marina the marina that yes marina. There you go. like let, let's dig into that planet spend an episode on that planet let's let's think about this kind of luke or, or these kinds of jedi with <laughs> jedi palpatine and jedi jabba or like an episode where they're in the prison like in andor or an episode where it's this whole climax and we really get to dig deep into the oh, relationship and can we and... oh my god please can we have the akbar the clone akbars can yes! we have something like that like in bad yes batch? can we have the bad bad story in yes this one with the akbar exactly Holy Please, yeah. please, <laughs> give us that. Please. <laughs> Those of you who can't see John, which is everyone apart from me, he's basically rocking backward and forth. Please, please. He's getting up on his chair. I need the Atmo Akbar, but the bad Akbar. Oh my God, yes. The the Akbar batch. The back, the back, the back bar. Is that, is that anything? Is that something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah I, but I, that would be amazing. Think... Please. Yeah. Us, yeah. And I do think this show could have gone deeper. We could have seen more of all the characters and explored a lot. I don't think we're beyond that. I think, you know, there yeah. is something here. And I think there that is. would be fantastic. But, you know, even so, they do a lot with what they're given. I think every action scene is extremely exciting to watch. The animation is fantastic. Like you said earlier, it's the animation style of the Lego movie. It feels blocky and, mm -hmm. you know, rigid in a perfect kind of way. And I really loved the final fight between Sig and Dev because Sig is just jumping and, like, the blocks are forming underneath him. And it all feels like you're a kid and you've just taken your action figures out and or your Lego more specifically. And you just, you, you know, you're just having fun with it. You've made stuff i remember when i was younger i had a millennium falcon and i took the front two bits off it and the cockpit off it and just made it into like a flying saucer and some of the stuff they do in this show like when they make the tie fighters and the x-wings and they combine the two together and you've got like mm. the tie wings and the x-fighters that's all just really really, really. cool man oh, and the really cool thing is that they released the lego sets uh, yeah this show what they've done is the dark falcon very tempted to get that but even though there's Ooh. many more lego sets that i want to get Ooh. the zelda set oh I saw the I saw the Zelda set in person today, and I mean, and then I'm sorry, but my dad had the audacity to say that I'm not a Zelda. He was like, "You're not a Zelda fan, are you?" And I was like, uh, "Sorry, Skyward uh, Sword says otherwise." Uh, excuse me, Ocarina of Time. Uh, excuse <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah, it's a great opportunity to make more sets as well because there's now a 
sat out there with Jedi Bob for the first time in 22 years. And we have the X-Wing TIE Fighter set, which, you know, you can buy if you want an X-Wing or a TIE Fighter. Or you can combine the two. Do you want Darth Jar Jar and Jedi Vader? Yes, you do. And you can have it. You can buy it. It's out there. The future is out there, John. The future of Lego. Oh, my God. The creativity <laughs> and building worlds together is so much fun. Yeah, I think there was like a massive surge of populace with Lego lately. Well, I mean, I think, I you know, adult Lego has become a big thing now. And so yeah. more than ever, it feels like kids and adults can enjoy it together, which is, I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. And then there's Lego ideas. Lego ideas mm. have so many, so many cool concepts and you can submit your ideas onto the website. What if I just submit a pitch for season two, but it's 22 episodes and Darth I'm a Gundai is there and it's all about the power struggle between all these different factions in the galaxy and we're going to bring the Landalorian into it. That's right. I'm using Lego ideas in a way that no one has ever used it before. I'm using it to create the perfect season two of this. Lucas oh, oh will hire me. You know what would be crazy? If like, okay, what? Emma Gundai would get the other club shitters in his team and he's just like, oh my god. And Emma Gundai would oh be like, god. I am! <laughs> I'm a Gundai am. leads the charge. We've got Claude. We've got C.O. Bibble. We've got Masamida. We've got we've got Slime Moore. We've got Dr. Evazan. Actually, Dr. Evazan was in this show, so you know, fair <laughs> fair there, deuce. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. oh god, never try and list Club Shittos in quick succession because I was struggling there. I was like, uh Dr. Evazan? Um, no, he was already oh, in the it. clones um, as well. The clones, Star Wars memes. Am I right? There's so many great memes as well in Star Wars that I love, like the yeah. people memes. Last week, I went to the cinema to see Revenge of the Sith. Our local cinema is doing every Star Wars film. Ten weeks. This week is Rogue One. I'm so excited. Don't get me started about how they're not showing Solo and during Revenge of the Sith. Whenever the memes happen, you can feel the energy in the room. You can just <laughs> feel it. And actually, there's some brilliant moments in this show that actually work because some of those memes. There's a moment where Palpatine does unlimited power and he says do it and that's really great and we didn't see obi-wan but i'm sure if we did we get a lovely hello there but i feel like this show creates memes in itself just because we get to see some of those characters we get to see c-3po as this homicidal maniac and we get to see darth maul as a lando-esque figure but you know still voiced by sam Witwer. it's a delight i grinned throughout the entire thing because i was just like this is this is just fun it's just fun it is fun it's a really fun show ah yes what are you gonna give it out of 10 i'm gonna give it an eight yeah me too nice 8 out of 10 thank you everybody for listening if you're listening on YouTube and you enjoyed it you can like and subscribe if you want to see more and if you're listening on Spotify or Apple you can follow and give us a 5 star review if you think we're worthy and next week we're doing Joker the original Joker we're gonna get depressed we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go into incel territory (laughs) that was such a weird cinema experience the controversy around it for some reason about mm. the, the film and stuff. It was a weird time. Yeah, I'm interested to rewatch it because at the time I gave it a 10 out of 10. I, I loved it. I thought it was absolutely yeah. excellent. And I guess now is going to be the time to see like, does it really hold up or is it just kind of like... Emulate you... Princess Society. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it going to be like, we're trying to emulate Scorsese and that's the appeal. Does that yes, still hold up? King of Comedies. Really interesting. Yeah, that one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Taxi Driver. That was the kind of big critique. I guess we'll see. Tune in next week. You can send Tune us an email at our time film at gmail.com let us know your thoughts on joker we'll be recording next saturday so let us know your thoughts on joker by then and we'll answer it right here on the podcast next week and you can follow us on instagram at after the time film party to see our incredible thumbnails from zane as well on twitter for more thoughts from tom uh, and me as well uh, sometimes i do and tiktok to see edited clips which are all also on instagram reels and youtube shorts and you can find the links to that all in the description below thanks to l james miller for the excellent theme and roland phillips focus as always and i think that's everything really uh yeah great cool good yes, stuff take what you're giving give nothing back goodbye <laughs> goodbye <laughs>